a lunatic, and, yeah. you know, he doesn't have a, a rational thought in his head, and all the other people are self-destructive, really aren't. Yeah. And you know, I'm just kidding with you, right? Okay, good, okay. good. Okay. So this is Hollywood, right? <laughs> yeah. We can act. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. What's your name? I'm Dan. Dan, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Warren. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've been in this a lot, but I've, I've watched this about a few times. Yeah. So, so let me ask you something. On the road, like, uh, like, what do they feed you guys? Like, I'm sure they got to feed you at those shows, but you can't just fill up because you gotta, you got to fight too, right? So, like, what kind of stuff feeds you right before a match? Okay. <laughs> uh, did, we, how, did you think all day? <laughs> with that one question? <laughs> I got a question for you. All right, here we go. We're going to go to my so, producer. So, uh, so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you're the producer? Why, I work there as well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, there's a lot of people in our office who talk a lot of crap on wrestling, say it's fake, and all that kind of stuff. Is there anything you'd like to say to them because all the people have a negative view on wrestling? They're bullshit. No. <laughs> I'm not in wrestling. No, I know that. No, I don't have anything to say for the past. I've said some things, you know, that there's a entire different generation of young kids that are trying to make their way in the business, and they should be given a chance. I think all the guys like Hogan and Piper and Nash and, and Bischoff and all those other guys who have stayed in the business and aren't really doing anything worthy in the business, and aren't uh, helping the young kids have a chance at their own success, you just pack their fucking gear bags and go home. <laughs> and, um, you know, people don't like that I've said that, but that's what I believe, you know. Who do you think the prime example that besides Hulk Hogan? Um, Kevin Nash and Piper and Bischoff and the other guys that stay in, you know, it's just a handful of them now. The other guys who are out there like a honky tonk and he does an independent thing. You know, he does his own thing. He doesn't try to stay in the big leagues. He knows he's not big league anymore. He just makes a living. He has fun. He goes out. He gets enjoyment with people. But, you know, guys like, uh, I, I would say Sting is an example, too. You know, that should just back his gear back and go home and give the younger guys an opportunity to make it. Probably the same type of thing like in a music industry. You know, you want the guys who have had 20 year careers and have done well for themselves. You want them to be inspiring to the young guys. You know, help them out in ways, not hold them back. And the money that's got to go to keeping guys like Hogan and Bischoff and Pay Piper and those guys and Nash and their contracts is just money to be spent on giving the younger guys an opportunity. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, you, you kind of act in politics and stuff. What's your current view on all the talk of Ty Wall Street? Um, well, I think it's. Um, I don't think I could say anything in a soundbite that would work well. Let me just put it that way. Okay. I think it's a little ridiculous that you know most of these people who are out there. Look, there are bad people and bad apples every place, and I'm, I would never take uh, just a um, a one-sided defense for corporate America. But I find it a little ironic when most of these kids own like iPads and iPhones and all this stuff, all these material things. They're a big part of the consumerism that goes on in this country. And um, they want, things just don't fall from the sky. Somebody's got to make them. Somebody's got to produce things. And there are producers who aren't, that are corrupt, that aren't on the up and up. But I think the biggest statement you can make is not to participate in the, the consumerism of it all. You know, don't buy the stuff. Start living your own life, you know, practice what you preach. And I don't see a lot of that going on. And I, I'm i not really down with um, the indecency that takes place. It's a squalor that seems to come out of these, you know, Occupy things when they form these protests. It's like they have no manners. There's no common decency. There's, you know, it's absolute just misbehavior. When they go down and interview these people, they don't really have an idea of what they want to do be done. They just want to participate in this energy that's down there, this, you know, frenetic energy about screaming and yelling and taking something down and being a rebel in a way. And I don't, I don't know. So, you went to Disneyland earlier today? I did. What's your favorite Disney ride? Um, probably Indiana Jones. I like Indiana Jones. Probably okay. better than all of them. If there was like a giant yeah. Royale of like every Disney character, who do you think would win? Oh. Now where do you guys come up with? <laughs> <laughs> Every Disney character of all time, Giant Battle Royale. Well, Mickey Mouse would have to win. 
see Mickey Mouse? Well, because in the Battle Royales, with all the wrestlers, the guy who brings in the most money in merchandising and marketing has to win. <laughs> <laughs> he has to go over. So Mickey Mouse, I mean, get that Daisy the Duck or somebody, or, you know, Switch or whatever these other off characters. You gotta have Mickey Mouse. He's gotta go over. Fair enough, right. nigga. Well, thanks for taking our thanks for thanks stopping to us. Okay, guys. No word on the food. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hey, man, thanks a lot, Warrior. You're welcome. Okay, have a great one. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yes.